welcome back to my channel. So today for you guys, I have a Dollar Tree DIY video using the Dollar Tree canvases. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different DIYs you can make using specifically the wooden frames from the Dollar Tree canvases. Let me know your favorite DIY down in the comments below. Mine's is this arch picture thing. You're gonna see it's the second DIY that I show. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and click the bell button to be notified every single time that I upload. I upload lots of Dollar Tree related videos videos, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Also, I uploaded a makeover video yesterday, a postpartum makeover where I did a full face of makeup and I cut my hair and I got so many nice comments in that video. So I just want to thank you guys for that. It's so many comments, so I can't respond to all of them and I don't have time like that, but I do want to say here, thank you so much. You guys really made my day and warmed my heart up very, very much. Thank you so, so much. Anyways, with that being said, let's begin the video. For every DIY, we're obviously going to be using the Dollar Tree canvases, specifically the wooden frame that's holding the canvas in place. Now there are staples in the back of the canvas that you might want to remove, and I say might because if I don't have to remove them for a DIY, I don't do it. They're a pain in the butt to remove. And what I have to do is use something flat like a screwdriver to get under the staple and then I use my pliers to pull them out. You can't just take a regular staple remover to them because the staples are pushed so far into the wood it's really hard to just remove with a regular staple remover. So you just need something flat to get underneath the staple, loosen it up a bit and then you can take your staple remover, pliers, whatever you want to use to pull the staple out of the wood. So for our first DIY I am going to be using using the four by six canvases and I didn't remove the staples from these ones. And I'm gonna be painting them white. You can paint them whatever color you like, but I'm going with white because I'm gonna be using something else from Dollar Tree that I purchased that's the color white. I'm also gonna be using these wooden rulers from Dollar Tree. They're two for a dollar. You'll find them near the office supplies. And I'm going to be removing the adhesive stickers that are on there. You can keep them on if you want though. And I'll be painting these white as well. Now what I'll do is I will be gluing some four by six pictures to the back of the canvas. So the front of the picture is facing the front of the canvas. So the canvas is basically acting as a picture frame. I just used my printer at home to print out pictures, but if you don't have a printer, I recommend Walgreens. I have gotten so many prints for really cheap from Walgreens. They usually have like a half off coupon on the print, sometimes even 60% off. So I tend to get prints a lot from Walgreens. This is not sponsored. I'm just saying like if you're looking for cheap prints go to Walgreens. Dollar Tree right now are carrying these decorative arches. If you cannot find the arches, they carry these like gates that have that arch look that you can use as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the decorative arch and placing it at the very top of the rulers. And I'm spaced out the rulers so they're the same width as that arch. Then I start to glue on my canvases. I take my time, I place my first canvas at the very bottom of the rulers so it lines up down there and then I just start to put one canvas over the other canvas until I reach the top. Then I glue down the arch. I do recommend using E6000 to get the arch down but I use hot glue for video purposes. I ended up taking off the decorative piece in the front and then painting the arch with the paint that I had on hand. The paint was still just a white paint but it was slightly different than the color of the arch. So to blend it in better with the frames I just put some of my white paint on top of the arch and then I placed that family sign back on the front of the arch. To sturdy up the back a little bit, I added some canvases also from Dollar Tree, but these do not have the wooden backing. So the canvases from Dollar Tree that don't have the wooden frame, they come in three packs. So it's three for a dollar and they come in the same sizes as the ones with the wooden frame. So these are the four by six ones and I'm just gluing them between the rulers and this just kind of helps sturdy up my piece. And you can just hang this on a wall, you can put this on a mantle, whatever you want. I love the way that this came out but I wanted to give you guys another idea using these. So I ended up making one more of these using different pictures and I'm attaching the two that I made together. 
Once I have them glued at the top, I flip this over and then I use some wood planks from Dollar Tree. These are the rectangular shape wood planks and I'm just placing them on the back where the rulers are so that this thing becomes one unit versus two separate units and it also helps make it very sturdy versus it kind of being a little flimsy because it's only being held together by hot glue. I also had some long wooden dowels that I purchased from Dollar Tree that I used to adhere the arch better to the rulers. Because I was using hot glue, like I said, I was afraid that the arches might snap back um, because I wasn't using a more heavy duty glue. So I ended up using the dowels to really just keep those arches in place and everything, like I said, just super sturdy so it wouldn't collapse on me. I wanted to place a wreath on the top of this so I used some Dollar Tree command strips and I figured out the placement of the wreath and then attached the command strip to the top of the arch and then that was it and I love the way this came out. I always get asked about doing one of those kind of arch windows and I've said it before it's very hard to make. You can use Dollar Tree foam board to do it but I feel like it looks funny that way and it's very hard to do because you got to get the cuts perfect. So this came out awesome. I love the way that it looks. It reminds me of something I could buy like inside of home goods or Burlington really pretty and it was super inexpensive for me to make our next DIY is simple it is pretty much using the canvases for what they are partly intended for so I'm using the biggest canvas that Dollar Tree carries it's the 8 by 10 canvas then I printed out an image originally on printing paper okay I tried it with just regular printing paper the cheapest type of paper that you could get I made sure that I sized the image so that it would almost take up the entire printing paper then I flip the image over I trace the canvas size onto the image and then I cut it down so that it fits perfectly on the front of the image now you're gonna need some Mod Podge you can use the gloss finish the matte finish it's up to you I would prefer to use matte but I only had gloss on hand Dollar Tree does carry Mod Podge it's a smaller container and they only carry it in the gloss finish that I've seen you're also gonna want to use a paintbrush or a paint sponge and what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a nice thick layer to the front of your canvas you want to make sure though you get it as smooth as possible so there's a nice layer for the paper to stick on but it's smooth now this is the issue I ran into when trying to use just regular printing paper regular printing paper is super thin and I had a very smooth front to the canvas with the glue and even with it being as smooth as it was the paper still ended up bunching up on me I even used my fingers to smooth out the glue so I had it all smoothed out then I placed my picture on top of the canvas you want to slightly use your hand to smooth the paper and adhere it to the canvas because you're going to use a brush to add another layer of Mod Podge so I used my finger to slightly and I was barely touching the canvas slightly place my paper down and and it was already bunching up and it was just because the paper is too thin I could just see it bunching in areas getting that little wrinkle appearance so at this point I'm like okay well it's too late I'm already knee deep in this there's nothing I could do about it so what you can do if you go the route of using printing paper and it does this just age it make it look aged make it look like a wrinkled piece of newspaper you know give it that aged appearance so I went with it I started to do more wrinkles then I started to kind of remove some of the ink using my finger to give it that aged look and then I added my layer of Mod Podge on top of You can of this. do as many layers as you like. You just got to make sure that you wait for the Mod Podge to completely dry before adding another layer of Mod Podge. Otherwise, it starts to like mess with the picture. So this is how this one ended up coming out. Like I said, I ended up just going with that wrinkled aged look. And I wanted to share this one with you guys before I share with you guys the next way, because just in case you end up using regular printing paper and you're like, well, mine didn't come out like that. I really wanted to show that there's a different outcome you can go with. So this time around, I'm using actual photo paper so it's thicker it's nicer quality than regular printing paper i got it from walmart dollar tree does carry photo paper it's just hard to find so i'm doing the same thing i'm adding my mod podge doing a nice smooth layer once i have that layer down i then place my picture on top and use my hand to lightly smooth out the picture this time around i didn't experience the same type of wrinkling bubbling as i did before because 
the paper was thicker. Then once I started to add my layer of Mod Podge over the picture, there was a little bit of uh, bubbling starting to happen, but I was able to lift the picture up and then smooth that out because the picture was thicker. If it was the printing paper and I tried to do that, it would rip because the printing paper is too thin versus this where I can lift it up and it didn't rip. I could fix the issue and then go on with my life. <laughs> so I wanted to show you both ways. This is the way that you want to do it. But if you end up using regular printing paper, I like I said, I wanted to share with you guys that way to give you an idea of what you can do so that you don't end up just tossing the entire project away. So I made three different canvases. One of them I ended up painting the edges black and I love how these came out. This cost me a dollar to make. I mean if you add how much I paid for the paper and the ink I don't even know how much that is. I just know that is way cheaper to do it this way than it is to go buy it somewhere. I think it was important to show you guys that sometimes something might not go the way you want it to, but you can still make it work. And sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to, and you just gotta call it quits. For our next DIY, I am taking the 5x7 canvases from Dollar Tree. I made sure I removed the staples from the back of all of these ones, and I'm gluing them together. I start by taking two canvases, gluing them side by side, and I make sure that at least one end is nice and even. The thing with a lot of Dollar Tree products, sometimes one is a little too small, sometimes one a little too big, so that's how it is with the wooden frames. Some of them are a little bigger, some of them are a little bit smaller, no two are alike, so I try to line up at least one side and then the other side, you know, it might be a little bit bigger, one piece of the wood. The reason I'm doing this is so wherever the canvases meet, they all line up perfectly together and just attach nicely. If I didn't do this and I try to glue them together, there's going to be parts where the wood might not adhere to the other canvases wood or it just has a bunch of gaps. So I at least try to line one side perfectly. So I glue four together and then I glued another four together. Then I attach those two pieces together. I don't know how many times I just said together. Now it's time to paint the wood. I used apple barrel paint in nutmeg brown, but I had watered it down so it would kind of act a little bit as a stain. I forgot to mention this. If you want to sand the wood down, you can. I don't do that because I don't have time for that and I don't care enough. I only do it if I absolutely have to, but for this, you know, I just pass on it. But if you want to sand it down for any other project, you can. Next up, I'm using the Dollar Tree framed mirrors. There's two different kinds you can get. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. I'm using the smaller one. Now, one mirror covers two of the um, canvases, but the thing is, not perfectly. So you're gonna still see some gaps on the sides of the canvas. So you kind of just want to line it up as much as you can to cover up at least the center part of your canvases. And I did this four times over. Now, if the gaps are driving you nuts, especially in the middle, you can add another mirror to cover up those gaps. So that's what I did to the middle, but on the ends, I didn't do that because it's not noticeable. It's only noticeable if you made it and you see it, but looking at it head on, it, you can't tell. To make this a little bit more sturdy, make sure everything's nice and attached all together, I'm using some foam board from Dollar Tree. You just take your foam board and cut out a piece to fit the back of your mirror and then go ahead and glue it into place. And that is it for this framed mirror. Now if you do not like the gaps that are on the sides of the mirror, what you can do is just go to the hardware store and get real wood and cut down the wood to fit perfectly around the Dollar Tree mirrors and then that'll work out. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, the gaps aren't completely noticeable unless you're on the side and you're like really staring at it, but head on, you don't see it. The next project we're gonna be making, I'm gonna be using the four by six canvases and the six by eight canvases. So I glue four of the four by six canvases to each other, and then I glue four of the six by eight canvases to each other. I'm just making these squared pieces that I am going to end up painting all black. 
And basically what I'm making are these lanterns. And the lanterns remind me of the lanterns that people tend to use near their fireplaces. They put the LED lights inside of them. They're really chic looking. And I was able to make each one for $4. So in my opinion, that's a win. Now if you want lanterns that are taller than these two, you can take apart the pieces of the wooden frames from the canvases. There's other little staples you can take out and then you can use those pieces to make a taller lantern. You can use the wooden frames of the Dollar Tree canvases to create shadow boxes and you can make them as big or as deep as you like. So I'm using the five by seven picture frames. I'm using four of them and I'm gluing one on top of the other. I don't wanna leave the staples inside of there because if you leave the staples, they're not gonna to attach to each other right and you're gonna see all these gaps and holes between each layer of wood. One of the picture frames, I didn't rip the canvas paper off. I removed the staples and I saved the canvas paper because I'm gonna be using this for the back of my shadow box. Before I attach that piece, I ended up getting this moss piece from Michaels, like honestly in 2018, under 2018 on sale. I paid like 70 cents for this thing. And I'm going to cut it down to fit the inside of my shadow box. Dollar Tree does carry during the summertime some moss sheets if you're interested I just don't know if they have them out quite yet now I go ahead and glue on that canvas piece that I saved I cut it down to fit the back perfectly and then I glued it down then I glue in side of the shadow box my moss piece I'm going to do kind of like a pop out shadow box I don't know what it's called exactly but I'm going to be using some succulents Dollar Tree carries a bunch of different ones that you can choose from I also got some from Michael some mini ones to place inside of here and I'm just going to figure out where I want them to be placed and then use my hot glue to attach them to the moss and it creates this really cute kind of greenery shadow box and the awesome thing you can also do with the Dollar Tree canvases is create crates so if you flip the shadow box down it's essentially a crate the only thing is if you use too many of the canvases from Dollar Tree at that point you might as well go buy a crate somewhere else that's much bigger than this if you end up using too many. well I will say is if you want to get like an 8 by 10 um, shadow box that's deep those can be a little bit more pricey going elsewhere and it might make sense to use the Dollar Tree canvases you just gotta you know be aware of what things cost to buy already and then to make unless you just love making and you don't really care about the cost of it. You don't have to just use family photos with the Dollar Tree canvases. You can also print out decorative images and use those inside of the wooden frames from the canvases. But you don't have to just stop there. You can add different accent pieces to these pictures to really make pretty decor pieces on a budget. So I used my Dollar Tree canvas. I got the wooden piece out painted it this time around I ended up using a wood stain it's the Verithane wood stain in dark walnuts then I printed out some images I got from online you'll possibly have to resize the image depending on what canvas you're using I used regular printing paper for this I took the paper again I just kind of um, trace out the shape of the canvas on top of the paper I cut it out and then I glue that to the back of the canvas. Now you don't just have to stop there, you can add accents to this. I had purchased this ivy garland from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago for my wedding and I twisted around to create a small little wreath. This ivy garland half off cost me $1.50 and Dollar Tree recently got the ivy garland in. I've said it so many times, after my wedding, Dollar Tree started to get stuff in that I used for my wedding and I was like, come on, like why couldn't they have this when I was actually planning for the wedding? So I just bent it around, made a small little wreath. I took some twine that I got from Dollar Tree attached it to the top of my wreath and then I glued that to the wooden frame and I made two of these that came out so pretty and I actually did this DIY a couple years ago and I still have these to this day inside of my home as decor pieces. Another great accent to the wooden pieces inside of the Dollar Tree canvases are wood beads. Dollar Tree carries wood beads 125 in a pack. They're colorful colors and if you're familiar with my channel you know what I'm going to say. You might as well go to Hobby Lobby at that point or 
Amazon and buy them from either or versus Dollar Tree just because you can get colors you already like for the same price or similar to. So these ones I got on sale at Hobby Lobby for a dollar. They're already in a color I like and I don't have to go and paint each in bead from Dollar Tree individually. Or you can always dye beads and it makes it faster to do versus painting each one individually. But you can get unfinished wood beads from um, Amazon in bulk. They come out cheaper to what you'll pay at Dollar Tree and they take the dye much better than the Dollar Tree beads. So anyways, you just glue those beads around your picture frame or you can put them inside of the picture frame, whatever it might be. And you get these really pretty images that are great for tear trays to hang on top of the wall. You can do so many things with the Dollar Tree canvases and different pieces you can pick up at the craft store or at Dollar Tree. This is another repeat that I've done on my channel before. You can get one of the bigger canvases from Dollar Tree. This one is eight by 10. Go ahead, paint that thing up. Then you'll purchase some of the wooden rulers from Dollar Tree as well. You wanna get a few packs of those and you'll end up painting the rulers too. I painted mine white. Go with whatever color you like, obviously. And what I'll do is I'll take some scissors and slowly cut into the rulers to make the rulers fit the back of the picture frame perfectly in terms of length. And when I cut with the scissors, I cut very slowly so that they don't split the wood. I'm using scissors because that's what I had on hand when I had filmed this. You can probably use a handsaw to do this. Uh, different tools if, as long as you obviously have them on hand. Once I have it cut down to the length that I need it to be, I then start to glue the pieces of the rulers to the back of my canvas. I did leave little gaps between each of the rulers so that there would be um, space for me to add some zip ties. I used hot glue again for video purposes, but I would have used wood glue if I didn't plan on recycling pieces. So now I'm using this wire basket from Dollar Tree and zip ties. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the zip ties through the rulers and then I'm gonna zip tie the wire basket into place. So basically this um, canvas is now able to hold a basket and I'm able to use this actually as an organizing piece or just to hold whatever that I would like it to hold. So in this case, I had made this for the kitchen. I ended up using some poster stickers from Dollar Tree and spelling out spices on the top of this. And then I just filled it up with some random pieces. Like I said, I suggest you use wood glue to attach the rulers to the canvas or E6000 glue, not hot glue. The reason I use hot glue a lot is because it dries more quickly so I can get my videos done faster instead of having to wait like 24 hours for the wood glue to dry. And also I end up recycling things. So, you know, all these DIYs I make, I can't possibly keep them all. So if I know that I'm not gonna end up keeping it, I will end up breaking the, it down and reusing things. So I could break the rulers off of the back of this, reuse the rulers and reuse the canvas. This is me reusing the exact same thing I just made. I just instead use the poster stickers to spell out some different type of bathroom decor words. And I use this as a bathroom decor piece inside of my bathroom. So that's what I do a lot with some of the DIYs that I make. I um, recycle them and reuse pieces for other videos. So I'm not going to the store and buying the same stuff over and over again. If I can't recycle it and I don't end up keeping it, lots of times I give it to my mother, I donate it, I give it to my aunt, she ends up giving it to different um, organizations in her area. So there's different things that ends up happening to my DIYs if I can't keep them myself. That's it for this Dollar Tree canvas DIY video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it inspired you guys to try different things. You can get like um, big, gigantic canvas value packs at Michael's too if you want even bigger canvases than the ones Dollar Tree carries. Well, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.